In today's episode of The Swing Report, we are covering the Ping i525 irons. I've got Thomas with me today to discuss these new irons in the player's distance iron category. We'll hit some shots and we'll tell you all about the technology and golfers. Make sure you skip to the final chapter of the video for our final thoughts. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahova, Second Swing Golf. Today I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. New irons today, Thomas, the Ping i525. Uh, they haven't really made an addition to player's distance iron category for a while. Uh, it's been three-ish years, I think, since the i500 was released, and now you got the i525. Uh, I mean, first glance, Thomas, what do you see out of these? Well, I think worth the wait. Yeah. Uh, I500s were exceptionally good, but then we had a hard time getting our hands on them the last, last year. But there's no doubt i525, they look really good mm -hmm. and they can perform really well. Yeah, for sure. I've, I'm very curious myself because I ended up getting i500s at the top of my iron set. This is going to be what it seems to be the replacement. And uh, it, there is a little bit of some tweaks to the look, uh, but uh, I think the technology, they've made some tweaks internally as well. I think that will really boost that performance. Uh, so kind of getting into some of that, of course, there's a new ballistic face. And talk about player resistance irons, all types of things these manufacturers are doing to really increase that ball speed and uh, they're calling it this ballistic face uh, and what they've got they got a unique targeted polymer that's po positioned precisely in the head to you know increase the ball speed throughout the face and uh, you know I think we'll see that today in the testing. Yeah I mean just that terminology is no doubt yeah. the face is going to be hot we're probably going to see some pretty high ball speeds. Yeah talk about ballistic right I yeah mean, that's explosive to me that's kind of what that means. Yeah. Uh, the Ford's Miraging Steel Face 17-4 stainless steel is the material on that face forged uh, and you're going to see that kind of get that hollow this type of sound I think you know and that's kind of the case with the i500 I think that sound will be pretty similar we'll do some comparison comparison there of uh, i500 to i525 see how that feels and sounds uh, but also one thing that I think is important to note is the grooves micro max grooves that they originally introduced in the i59 the sim the basically the same design with the i525 here where there's a little bit there's actually more grooves in a tighter space and that design is to create more consistency, reduce flyers, things like that. Yeah, there's four extra grooves, and I think that's going to be so important with this type of iron. Yeah. Let's face it, when the loft is a little bit stronger, generally there's a chance to get more of a flyer. You, if, mm -hmm. if there's 30 and a half degrees of loft on the, on the 7 iron, for example, and if you crush one, pull it a little bit, there's a chance that you can, yeah, getting a flyer, you get, say, grass stuck between the ball and the, and the club face. Now, four extra grooves is going to help reduce the chances of that bull getting a flyer. So I think that's huge with this type of player's iron. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then they also have their Hydro Pearl finish as they've had in several of their club models over the years that you know really kind of releases that moisture when it's wet. Maybe you're playing in dew, maybe it is raining outside uh, and it keeps that consistent performance. And then lastly, the perimeter weighting. You know, I think that's one of those key items that every manufacturer is doing as well. We talk about you know some of those, you know, the ballistic thing with the distance. Well, with the forgiveness side, they're really adding weighting to the perimeter, specifically in that toe side, and that's been done here at I-525, to just give you that forgiveness and consistency. Yeah, and one thing I'm also noticing, you're talking about kind of weighting, you saw a toe side, you can definitely see it's a little bit thicker than yeah. say I-500 was, but you can see the sole looks like it's a little bit thicker as well, mm -hmm. so a little bit larger than I-500 was, but top line looks thinner, so it's interesting the way it's been designed. Yeah, for sure. Well, I think they're definitely designed for distance. They've definitely for designed for forgiveness. Those players may be um, looking for both of those things without sacrificing all workability. So I guess we'll see what Trackman tells us here, Thomas. You ready to hit some shots? Yeah, I am going to anticipate this club is probably going to be a spin killer. Yeah, for sure. All right, so Thomas, you've got the pitching wedge in the set. Um, you know, we got those sent with your gamer shaft as well. So we'll be testing with kind of the, you know, the feel, I guess, and the shaft, I suppose, that you're used to. But if you look down at that wedge, um, what do you see? Maybe talk about maybe the, the look and kind of the size of the club head. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I put, I put it down. It looks kind of like the big brother of I-59. Okay. Is really what it looks, looks like. And first thing I noticed for sure are all those grooves. There's, like I mentioned, there's four more grooves on the face. Mm -hmm. Um, the wedge isn't, you know, that much larger than, say, an I-59 wedge would look. Yeah. But looking down at it, it's just a little larger profile. We know the loft is a touch stronger, so we're talking 45 degrees of loft on the pitching wedge. Okay. So I'm curious to see what kind of spin rate we're going to get. 
As I mentioned, these irons, they're probably going to be a little bit more of a spin killer than I'm, what I'm used to right. with a pitching wedge spin. But let's kind of see what happens. Yeah, I'm definitely curious to see that because I know, you know, players' irons that you're used to, the spin usually is a little bit higher with a pitching wedge probably in that, what, 8,000 range maybe with yeah. a club like that. But I, I imagine with the player's distance iron, it goes down from there. Right, and my pitching wedge that I play has 46 degrees of lock okay. on it. So it's not like it's, we're talking one degree stronger. One degree of, of loft is usually around about three or four yards. Yeah. Um, and we'll probably see spin, you know, normally spins probably around about 8,000 with my wedge. I don't have the highest amount of spin because I'm more yeah. of a picker than, than a digger. Yeah. But uh, I would be surprised to see if this one spins in the 8,000 category. Okay. Yeah. Expecting lower than that? I would expect, yeah, probably in maybe six to 7,000. Okay. Yeah. Let's see what happens. All right, well, go. six to seven thousand, that's pretty close. Yeah, so 60, uh, 6901 there. Mm -hmm. Get that touch better than the last one. Yep. Okay, so you're a couple shots in, you've hit one. That one was a lot better, you think? Yeah, um, the first one I got maybe just a, a, a touch heavier. First, first shot. Interesting. Okay. Um, you can see the spin dropped a little bit on that one. I got a little bit more ball speed, a little bit higher carry yeah. distance on that shot. Okay. But yeah, it's it's interesting. The spin is pretty low. Mm -hmm. yeah. For sure. A little bit more spin on that one. Mm -hmm. it's interesting that that one went left and it still kind of spun like that. Yeah, and I I play a little drawer with. You know, oh my clubs for the most part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, so that one left the face a little bit more open on. And you can see 2.4 degrees open with the face yeah. angle. But really the spin it didn't, didn't really balloon. It, it didn't balloon like it. You, you see sometimes with other irons when that face turns open and you miss out to the right. Right. Just a touch lower on the face. And okay. there's that spin. Mm -hmm. So we have five with the wedge. Um, you know, talk about the feel of that club. I know it's not a you know forged muscle back by any means. but yep. How does that uh, club feel? I mean, it's a touch louder off the face. Yeah. Um, the one thing I really like about these clubs is even though I'm getting less spin, is the height that I'm getting out of them. Mm -hmm. So I'm. You'll notice that I'm hitting that wedge fairly high. I mean, that's a landing angle 55 degrees, height over 100. That's, that's a lot of height. Yeah, yeah especially, like you said, that's, I mean, it's, it's lower spin, for yeah. especially for you and what you're used to. You know, right, out, right just above 7,000 on average, and that was with that last one kind of being a little bit low on the face. You know, and you're still comfortably at well over 100 feet, and you're landing angle 55, so I think it's still steep enough where you're, you have less than three yards of rollout after the shot or after right. the ball lands. Yeah, I mean, my pitching wedge normally carries about 140. Mm -hmm. And we'll see here, I might have had a couple misses in there, about 142. Every degree of loft is usually about three or four yards. So it's very, very close yeah. with regards to um, the distance. It's just got less spin on it, but it's flying a little bit higher. Okay. And I think that's a huge win, especially when it comes yeah. to gapping, because a lot of people talk about that when you're hitting a, a club really far, Gapping can be an issue. I would love to say, well, you need five wedges in the bag right. if I was going to hit that particular club. Well, notice the wedge really isn't going that much further because mm -hmm. it's going on a different ball flight. Right, for sure, yeah. for sure. Well, curious to see if that trend continues um, up the bag. We'll, th we'll go to seven iron here. Um, so what we can do here to kind of, for c comparison's sake, we have I-500. We hit the seven iron of that as well after okay. the I-525 just to see any difference there uh, from the previous model. It's a good plan. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You're going to see some low spin with this one, I think. That's a great example right there. Yes, look how, slow, look how low that spin is. I mentioned in the intro this is going to be a, a spin killer. Mm -hmm. It is. I mean, 43, 66 right. with a 7 iron is very, very low. My attack angle was barely down, negative 0 0.4. So that's a tribute to, to a, a little bit. However, check out the height that yeah, I just hit that It's club. still launching at 18.4 with 118 feet in the air. 
118 feet in the air, landing air 49.4. And yes, I have club speed around about 89, 90 miles an hour with my seven iron, but I am so confident that even if someone came in with kind of low 80s, it's gonna drop a little bit, but they're still gonna be above that 45 degree threshold, I right. think, mm -hmm. even though the spin's less. So it's a spin killer, it's gonna pick up players' distance, but, it but it's, it's higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, that's really important. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another one. Wow, was that high? Yep. Another that one, one faced, you know, a little bit more open. Yeah. Faced a path of 1.2. I was but say, another one of those where the spin didn't spike after a, the face was open, you know? Right, yeah. It went up a little bit, but it wasn't like a game-changing increase in spin. Yeah, this is, this is impressive. Because let's face it, it's not always about total distance and carry distance. Right. Like with irons, it's 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 about Rarely is it ever hitting the distance every that. single time because mm -hmm. you want to be consistent every, every time. Well, when we test some other game improvement irons or players' distance irons, yes, I can hit it 220, 230 with a seven iron. Right. It's, it's it's stupid, but I'm not going to get those numbers with this. It's going to spin less, but it's going to fly on a higher ball flight. Yep. Yeah. So it's not. And it's probably yeah. going to be at least based on the first couple of shots. It looks like it might be more consistent too with those distance numbers. Right. I hope so. Probably pretty close again. Yep. There you go. That's just, that's so high. And yes, I'm leaving the face a little open on that shot. That landing angle is, I haven't seen this out of a, out of a player's distance yeah. iron before. Uh, I, I'm actually shocked to see mm -hmm. the height. The landing angle there is kind of absurd, actually, for how far, so, how yeah, what kind I mean, of speed right I'm now, it's an average of 50. Yeah, which is too high, really. Yeah, it, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, what am I, my stopping power there is like nine yards mm -hmm. from my carry to total, and yeah, it's pretty impressive, very, very high. Yep, all right, so very consistent, I like that. Let's take a look at numbers. I wanna add in one other thing here too to today's testing because sure. I think this is important that I, that I do this for this club because not everyone's gonna swing at 90 miles an hour with a seven iron. Yeah. So I actually wanna hit this as well with a little less speed. Okay. Because I'm talking here, I'm getting a landing angle close to 50 degrees with 90 mile an hour club right. speed. What's it gonna be like for an average golfer? What's it gonna be like for someone sure. that maybe swings in the low 80s? with their, with their yeah. seven iron. I think that would be a sure. good test. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. just on uh, your full swing there though, it's important to note how consistent those dots are, carry distance. I mean, that's a very, we're talking about just a few yards. I mean, your, your deviation factor there is 1.3 on the carry right. distance. I was so. actually hitting the seven iron better than I was in the pitching wedge. Yeah. Based on the consistency. There yeah. you go. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's actually tremendous to, yeah. to see that, so. Right. Okay, let's, uh, here, I'll set you up with a kind of a couple, just hit a few swings here with Okay, that. I'll just slow it down a little bit. Yeah, definitely slow it down a little bit there. Getting close there you to, go. There you go. And it's right around about that landing angle of. Because you're, I think you say, you, Scott, you like to say 40, what, 45 is about ideal? 45, well, it depends on the player's club speed. Now, okay. if you're swinging at 80 miles an hour, that landing angle naturally is going to be lower because you just don't have enough speed to get right, the ball right, in there, right. unless you have more loft on, on the golf club. But that's, that's pretty good right mm -hmm. there. Like I mentioned, spin killer, 13 yards of stopping power on that shot when you're swinging at 81 miles an hour. Very good. Okay. Yeah. I, in, in this instance, if I was to swing at this speed because my attacking was a little bit shallower, a retro spec might be, might be an option, yeah, yeah. Um, which you can definitely do with ping, but I don't think I really need much more because as I mentioned, that landing angle was already pretty good. Mm -hmm. I like it. Wow, yeah. yeah. That's a very straight ball flight there too. The whole three feet of curve on that one. Right, so that's, that shot right there is my seven iron numbers. Yep. With when a, when your, I am your, swinging at 90 swing. miles an hour. Yeah. Wow. 178 carry, going 180. I'm basically the exact same numbers as what I'm seeing with my 
seven iron. Yeah, and you just slow down your swing, you know, what, eight miles an hour? Seven there. miles an hour, yeah. slower. Yeah. That's impressive. And you're still Good. getting it basically 100 feet in the air. That's, that should be very encouraging for golfers that might struggle with maybe getting enough speed or maybe getting enough height on their, their iron shots. Uh, maybe they're seeing it roll out. Maybe they're playing a game improvement set right now and they want to move up to something with a little bit more workability, but yep. uh, you'll want to preserve the easy launching capabilities. I think you have that with I-525 just on the first few swings here. Yeah, so as I mentioned, spin killer, but launching higher. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of a, the direction that drivers try and go, high launch and, right, and low is. spin. But it's, it's high enough to give stopping power. I mean, 83 mile an hour club speed, height 100 feet in the air with landing out 46. That's a win for a club in this category. For sure. Yeah. So I, I don't really need to see hit, hit more shots. So those last two shots kind of pretty much they tell the story, I think. Yeah. It's, you know, you slowly swing, swing speed down here. You can see the landing angle is still with 45 plus at 82 miles an yeah. hour on average. Should so we move to the, just see how the I-500 stacks yeah. up then? Let's that's, uh, that's compare 7-iron versus I-500. What was my club speed on average when I was hitting the I-525 originally? We've got you. 90.8. 90.8. Okay. So I'll try and get as close to that yeah. as I can with some shots and see. Big difference looking down at these clubs for sure. Yeah. Um, you see the grooves with I-525. There is a lot more grooves than looking down at the face. But otherwise, if you were going to take the grooves away, they look very, very similar. Let's say I-5, I-525 is maybe just a touch thinner on the top, but then you flip them around here, and right. you can see I-500 actually is a little bit smaller on the sole and smaller on the, on the toe area, where I-525, you're seeing more mass yeah, down I, here. Yeah, I sure. definitely agree when I looked at yep. those two. It's, it's weird. You, you don't usually see that combination of a club having a thinner top line, but then a thicker sole yeah. than its previous one, but it looks like that's what I-525 is here. Yeah, I think this is actually going to blow a lot of the competitors away. Yeah. In, th in this category, for sure. Um, and for golfers that are trying to pick up a little bit of distance, but don't want to get the flyers. And I think that yeah, look yeah. will be very inviting, too, because there is that thinner top line, but then it's thicker on the sole. You don't really see that at a dress. Right. So. I mean, the biggest thing that I, if originally I'm looking down at, you know, seeing all those grooves, it's a little bit different. But after hitting five, six shots, you kind of forget about the grooves. For sure. Because, I mean, there's a lot more grooves looking down. It's kind of like, like Nike used to have a lot of grooves on their irons. I remember having a lot of grooves looking down. So it's kind of like that look, but um, it's pretty good. Pretty, mm -hmm. pretty good looking club. Okay, I-500, 90 miles an hour. There we go. I'm going to be, I guess, based on the I-525 testing, I would imagine a lower launch and flight here, probably. A little lower. Um, Just by the construction of the club, too. Like, if there's more yeah. weight lower or more mass, it appears to be lower in the I-525. You'd think that would also help the ball launch higher. Right. And you can see that shot there, the, the height drop and the mm -hmm. landing angle dropped on that one. Maybe didn't quite catch it as solid. Ball speed was a little lower. Same club speed. But, right. Uh, just a touch lower, but same kind of carry distance. That's a good one there. Yep. I, st I th and again, this is only three shots in. I, I think we're gonna come. We're gonna see at the end of this that I five twenty five launches a bit higher, with a little bit more height. Right. I'm noticing uh, the being in the seventeens. Those three. Those three swings, mm -hmm. and we were kind of in the eighteens with the yep. I five twenty five. Landing angle is also not as steep so far with this one. That was hit solid. That was a screamer. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I noticed right away that one hit lower on the screen than most of them so far. Right. A little lower launch. Well, it'd be close. All right. Well, we can quickly bring up these numbers and kind of compare the I-500 here. So let's kind of do 
one of these here. So there's our dispersions up top. This is orange is the I-525, red is the I-500, and then we got the numbers over here. And um, let's see, let's take a look. I think we were most curious about kind of the, you know, the, the spin and then the height generated. Yep, spin, launch, and, and landing Nine angle. Nine feet higher height. on average. Landing angle is two degrees steeper. Launch is 1.2 degrees higher with I-525. And that is with, you were actually coming in a little bit steeper with the I-500. Um, yeah, I'm mean, talking I mean, this is, point 0.4. Right, yeah. barely. And my club speed was, I believe, pretty much the exact same, 90.2, yeah. uh, 90.8, 90.2. So it was a little bit slower, um, but e even still, launch angle significantly lower there. Yeah, also note so. that you're just more as consistent with the I-500. Both spin and distance was varying a lot more, and you can see that on the map too. I mean, a little bit more of a discrepancy north to south uh, on there versus the I-525. So. Right. I think you know some of those theories that we had were are kind of coming to fruition here in this test. Yeah. So for me, when I'm swinging at my speed, bull was stopping within nine and a half yards when I was hitting yeah. the I-525. 195.5 carry going 205. I-500 197 going 208. So 11 yards. So 1.5 yards better stopping power yeah. with the I-525 just by having it kind of launching a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna, as a golfer that swings a little slower, you're gonna see that also. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. why we did that test with me swinging at about well, 82 miles an it's hour. It's something we should know. I mean, in your moderate speed, you know, kind of when you slowed it down, hit those two shots, a launch was still higher by a degree. That is, yeah, that is, that's important to bring you up know, there. Yeah. I mean. Same smash factor. Right. <laughs> one four you hit four, it the one same, four, four. you know, you're, you're actually, you know, coming down even a little bit steeper on that slower swing, right? Yeah. And even still, the launch was higher. Uh, so that, I think that's something that really should be noted here. It seems to be very clear to me that the I-525 is going to launch higher, generate more height for you than the previous generation. Right. Yeah. So you, you're going to pick up distance. You're going to pick up a higher, yeah. higher launch, lower spin. Right. Uh, good ball speed numbers because the loft is a little bit stronger and also the face is very hot. Um, and you're not going to have to worry about right. inconsistent jumper lies, anything like that, where mm -hmm. the ball is going to go the same distance every single time. Right. And I think if we look at the, the dispersion screen there, if you look at I-525, you can see that orange circle was, was pretty consistent there every yeah. single time. I mean, you look left to right, it was, it was smaller. Mm -hmm. Left and right shots are going to be user error. But from north to south, it was tighter. I think that's sure. the most important thing. All right. Well, we do have one club left we want to maybe hit was the four iron. Maybe just a few swings just to see how, I mean, explosive it is. But also, you know, for those players that, you know, are questioning long iron in the bag, you know, maybe see the forgiveness of it as well. Yeah. And I think we were just talking about that Cameron Champ yeah. was playing. I think like he's got a, a two or a three or maybe both in his yep. bag. And uh, I know he had, when he put it in the bag, it was his 290 carry club which that's... <laughs> He's I mean, got that's some a, serious that's, speed. That's just playing a different yeah. game than right. the game we play. Yeah, this top line looks pretty thin looking down at it with a four. Heavy. It's quite interesting for catching that heavy. <laughs> it got away with that. Yeah, you did. Yeah. We still hit 100 feet in the air. Obviously, it's rolling out a little bit right. because of the uh, spin, but... That was chunky for me because you'll notice the smash factor right, one is lower than it was with the seven iron. Right. So I left them on the table on that one, but quite forgiving there for a miss it. A little more bull speed there. A little cleaner contact on that one. There we go. Yeah, 100 feet in the air. Something to note is I think you hit the same total distance with both of those last two shots. <laughs> Just a little bull, better bull flight on that one because I didn't catch it as heavy. Yeah. So it's a little, a little higher, a little more spin. Mm -hmm. A little left. Yeah, it's actually not, not as far left as I would have thought after seeing the way you, it kind of hit the screen. Same total distance. I was going to say, <laughs> if you need a 249 yard club, this is fun. <laughs> I mean, you've hit 249, 249, yeah. 248.3 with those three shots. Right. Still 100 feet in the air for a little pole. It's pretty good. God, my swing is so terrible today. See, you didn't like that one. And 
you still, I mean, that's 90 feet in the air. It's a, kind of that pole draw. Yeah, a little pole draw. Again, the spin went down, but actually compared to the other two, it's what, a three or 400 yard or RPM difference. Not a ton is lost with that one. Right, I mean, very similar carry distance there, kind of all hovering around about 230-ish, yeah. I think 231 on average. Pretty close to the same total distance you can mention. Mm -hmm. Probably about 250 club is what this is going to yeah. be. And these probably weren't my, my best swings. I haven't hit four irons in a, in a while. I've um, been working on, on the swing on other, with other clubs. But uh, for me, this would be a great club to hit off the tee on short par fours. Mm -hmm. um, for you. It's and then naturally, a four iron is always going to be harder to stop on the green. So you're going to see that carry to total distance number drop. Um, you're gonna, you, sorry, you get further apart, but you'll see the landing angle drop. And that's just gonna happen with a forearm. Yeah, and um, we should note, I mean, look how consistent this is still. This is carry, right? Yeah. And if we go to total, it's even, you know, it's still more impressive and you're hitting it two, you know, they have these three that are exactly 248 or 249. Then you had one that, this one rolled out a little bit more to like 255, but right. it's uh, consistent. I mean, all these, I mean, look at the, there's, these ovals are very, you know, horizontal. Uh, and I think that says something about I-525 that, you know, the seven iron, especially in the four iron up here, are that consistent. Right, and then we gotta talk about gapping a little bit. So how will, the, how will these clubs gap with, with regards to these lofts, if I was to play them? Right. So they're gonna be a little bit further apart. My pitching wedge was carrying about 145, and my seven iron was carrying 195. Mm -hmm. So let's think about that. So let's see if that's about 15 yards or not. So pitching wedge, would be 145, 9 iron, 160, mm -hmm. 8 iron, 175, yeah, 7 it's iron, gonna it's, be, it's close. It's close, it's yeah. close. Now keep in mind, Not I perfect. probably wouldn't play these clubs, but that would be the notice it's, it's, it's close. Yeah, for um, you. Now if you had a slower swing speed, a little bit slower than I would, absolutely these mm -hmm. would be a good option. Or if you spun the ball a little bit more, if you were more of a higher spin player, this is going to reduce the spin, but it's also going to be yeah. okay with the gapping. Yeah. yeah. The other thing I'm curious about too is the potential for a combo of this at the top and then I-59 down low. I know there's you know, a, a pretty large difference in the size and yeah. things like that, but it could be something or maybe this could be like a, you know, the way Cameron Champ is using it, like a longer iron in the bag, you know, three, four iron, for example, then you play I-59 is for the better player. Right. I think that's certainly a possibility. But I think we know for sure extra launch, extra height with the I-525s. And I'm very curious to see how these stack up then in kind of one of our ultimate player assistance iron tests. Because like you said, this isn't the height generated and the landing power generated um, isn't really something that you've seen before. Right, I'm, I'm really impressed. And I'm looking forward to see uh, what Ping's gonna come out with next. We're thinking like the I-210 line yeah. You know, what is there going to be a replacement for that True. club? That would be a great club that would That's another would, potential would, combo would now. Combo right yeah. there. Mm -hmm. I know that's something that's kind of up your alley there. Yeah. And I'm, I'm intrigued to see, you know, what they do come out with, with replacement. Is it going to have these same, the great same groove technology? Right. I think it probably would. Well, right. why, that's, any of these? It's definitely delivering that consistency as we're yeah. seeing. So. Yeah. So it's consistent. You're not getting jumpers or anything like that. And yeah, I definitely approve of these irons for sure. All right, testing complete, Thomas. I-525 irons and some I-500 in there with the seven iron. I think we definitely can draw some conclusions from the data, um, specifically tied to launch angle, height, and kind of that stopping power piece. I know we talked about that a lot already, but there's clearly an improvement there for I-525. Right, and I actually want to bring up on the screen here, we, when we're fitting, we sometimes bring up the, the TrackMan optimizer. Um, so if we click on the seven iron I-525, this is when I was swinging at my normal speed. Mm -hmm. If we have a look at these numbers, you can see with the way that I deliver the golf club, you can see that my attack angle, it's shallower than what yeah. then would be suggested. Um, so my spin loft number is going to be lower than what would be suggested. Yeah. That's my golf swing, it's just the, the way right. I am. Um, however, there's some takeaways here to be taken. So this is based on mid trajectory. We'll notice here with regards to carry distance, notice the ball speed I'm getting out of this club. Yeah. The ball speed is so blue, the blue area is like ideal. Yeah. Like if you kind of hit the blue area here, you're in, in the ideal spot. Um, 
to give you maximized yeah. distance, uh, mid trajectory for a seven iron essentially, and stop and power in front of that. We look here at the bull speed. Now the loft is a little stronger. Yeah. The way that I compress the bull with a lower attack angle, I'm gonna get a higher bull speed with the with the club. So that's a win. More mm -hmm. more distance is definitely a win. Also, when my spin loft is low, my attack angle also is very shallow. The spin. Yeah. So this is where we kind of talk about that spin and being a spin you know, killer. Yeah. Ideally, you know, six to eight, six thousand to sixty-eight hundred is kind of what you know TrackMan would kind of suggest. However, we take a look at this height. Yeah. And we already talked about nine and a half yards of stopping power for me when I was hitting the club. Very good. I mean, I'm at the top end here with regards to height for a mid trajectory, yeah. even though my spin's kind of on the lower side. I also want to bring up high trajectory. So we now we go to high trajectory. You'll notice now they, they might want a little bit more spin for a little higher trajectory. But you'll notice the launch angle is still fairly high. Mm -hmm. The height, it's kind of fitting right in the, the perfect spot there. Yeah. So plenty of stopping power. Now, let's go to those slower swing speeds. So moderate speed. So if we take a look here at the moderate speed, we look at, first let's look at mid trajectory. So we look at mid mm -hmm. trajectory, we're still seeing the same trend, ball yep. speed, outperforming. Launch angle is still kind of on, on the higher end. Um, spin rate, that's just me because my attack angle is low. Um, the spin rate is on the low side. However, we'll notice the stopping yeah. power. It's fitting in the height category. Yeah. That's really all I care about, is I can give someone an iron that they're gonna have stopping power. That's what I care about. High trajectory, now this is now a push because you're only swinging at 82 miles an hour. You're not gonna expect to hit the ball crazy high. However, it's still fitting within the that ideal high, zone for that. high, mm -hmm. even with less club speed. Yeah, that's the crazy part is the way, so the way you deliver the club is it's very shallow and that by nature decreases spin and that's why you're seeing on the scale there, the spin numbers that we you know, noticed are so low, but even with that, you, you would generally expect the height to drop as well, kind of outside of that optimal window. Yep. And you know, maybe the same with launch angle, but, but that's not the case with these irons. You can see that, you, you know, this is the high trajectory for a, you know, what you would consider maybe more of an average club speed that walks in here. Yep. Uh, maybe a little bit on the higher side, but still that launch angle and the height are very much in a great window for those players. So I think that's the key piece to take away from I-525. Exactly. And most golfers are not going to swing with an attack angle of negative 1.2. Um, they're going to be kind of more around the negative 4. Negative 4 to 7 iron is considered yeah. average. Anything that is below negative 4 is considered more of a picker. Anything higher is considered more of a, a digger. Tour average on track man with, with tour players is like negative 4.3. Okay. Um, they're taking those big divots. And they're and taking a little yeah. bit more turf. Now, for some reason, I just have a hard time yeah. getting down at the ball, and that's just something I've always done. Um, so my spin loft drops. But the takeaway here is when I was hitting the I-525 with less club speed, hovering in the very low 80s, I still had stopping power. The ball still yeah. stopped within 11 yards. Yeah, and so now we can kind of get into that discussion of, you know, who are these clubs for? I think there's a couple of players that, or player types that come to mind, and I think number one would be somebody that does generate a lot of spin, almost too much spin with irons. Yes. And, you know, doesn't want to sacrifice maybe the height they get, uh, the launch that they get. Uh, they can get that and still maintain that, but also drop that spin with these clubs, I think, too. Yeah, someone looking for a little more distance, that's just, we need to, we did lower the spin with their seven iron. Mm -hmm. That's what, it's gonna be a, a perfect club for that player. Yeah, yeah. and then I think just the other type too that comes to mind is, you know, talking about, I know you don't like handicap ranges, but someone that, you know, isn't the a world-class player that maybe will necessarily face a few times in the round, uh, doesn't want that, those shots to be catastrophic. You still get the stability out of this club, but you can also still hit that draw. You saw that trajectory come into play with the draw today that you like to hit. So someone that wants kind of a good mix of workability and forgiveness. Yeah, exactly. And then consistency. I think having those For extra sure. grooves on the face, I think pings onto something here with the micro max grooves. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's going to be key, um, even in a player's distance iron, to see how well it performed, how num the numbers were consistent every single time when I was hitting the seven iron. That stood out to me is, you know, my consistency on five shots was plus or minus 1.3 yards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Well, I think, you know, we definitely have the stamp of approval here for I-525. Thomas, the testing was great. Uh, really good launch, really good height. I think that's the takeaway from these clubs. If you're interested in I-525 irons, you know what to do. 
Uh, visit SecondSwing.com for more information to schedule your fitting, whether that's in store or through a virtual fitting online with one of our master fitters. And we'll get you set up with a new set of I-525 irons. Thomas, thanks for joining today, hitting all the shots and explaining the data. Really exciting irons here for 2022. Yep, I-525s are very good.